Are you bored with your meals? It doesn't matter what stage of life we're in, we all get tired of cooking the same dang thing every night. Get your aprons on, get in the kitchen, and let's jazz up our go-to meals. Now you've probably heard this a lot when, as a tip when it comes to meal planning, is have theme nights. I learned about having theme nights from the food nanny. You could do meatless Monday. Like we love cooking chili, but it's always fun to just make it meatless with beans and different spices. You could do Mexican Monday, so you could do things like burritos and enchiladas, Spanish rice and stuffed peppers. For Tuesdays, of course, Taco Tuesday, Takeout Tuesday. So what are your favorite foods that you like to get for takeout? that you can make at home. I'm, I'm telling you my sweet and sour chicken is better than takeout. You could do waffle Wednesday. What's some fun things that you can add on top of a waffle? Wrap Wednesday. What salads or proteins like your fish, your chicken, that you can make that you could just wrap it? You could wrap it in lettuce, you could wrap it in a flour tortilla. You could do a throwback Thursday and try something completely new. I love sharing recipes from the past, especially from the Great Depression. And when I started experimenting with Great Depression recipes. I realized that a lot of my family's go-to recipes growing up were based from the Great Depression. You could do Fish Friday. You could steam fish, grill fish, smoke fish, bake fish. You can have it on top of a salad, put it in pasta, put it in a soup, stew, a wrap, a stir fry. <sighs> This is really making me hungry. You could have a fondue night. What are your favorite things that you could dip in cheese or a broth? You could do sandwich Saturdays, sheet pan Saturdays, soup Sundays, spaghetti Sundays, seafood Sundays, salad Sundays. Other ideas, a charcuterie dinner night. I love having charcuterie boards for dinner. Of course, breakfast for dinner is always good. This can give you a way of making a certain meal 10 different ways. Let's talk about Taco Tuesday. That seems to be like the big one everyone goes to, okay? Yes, you could do your traditional tacos, but for some reason when we don't put it in a taco shell, like a hard taco shell, and put it on a tostada, it's like completely different and exciting to us. How is it any different than putting it in a taco shell? I don't know, but it just is, and the kids look forward to it, and it's so good. We like to also fry up scones and make Navajo tacos, and something about that yummy dough with the beans and the ground beef and the toppings and the ranch dressing. It's just so good. Uh, we like making fish tacos, shrimp tacos. We like making taco soup, taco stuffed shells. And that's with pasta. That is a really good one. That one is so good and so filling. Taco salad. We love having this Dorito taco salad. It is so good. All you need is your ground beef, taco seasoning, a can of black beans, a bag of Doritos and a bottle of cannellina dressing. And of course the normal fixings like your lettuce, tomatoes. We'll do onions. You guys, the salad is so good. We have this one maybe twice a year and we always look forward to having it. Let's do some swaps. One thing that we like to do is switch out rice with cauliflower rice. It works well in stuffed peppers and great substitution for any grain bowl that you make. If you wanna cut pasta out for one night, you can make some zucchini noodles. Use a spiralizer to transform that zucchini into long noodle strands. Zoodles are a great substitute for pasta in dishes like spaghetti, lasagna, or even pad thai. Spaghetti squash instead of pasta. We make a spaghetti squash bake. It is one of our favorite, favorite meals. Now this meal we have more during the fall and winter. It's so easy to make. Uh, you could switch it up by using beef or sausage. You can add vegetables to it. Oh, it's one of our favorites. Portobello mushroom caps instead of burgers. Let's talk french fries. Maybe you guys love making french fries. Last year I made french fries from carrots and let me tell you, they were delicious and the kids liked them. You could definitely switch things up when it comes to your pizza dough. You can use bagels, the big ones or the minis. They make great freezer meals, especially during the summer or back to school time and the kids come home and they're just hunkering. You can pop those out of the freezer, put them on a baking sheet, throw them in the oven. So it's always yummy to make a pizza on a bagel. I grew up making them on an English muffin. You can make them on a loaf of French bread. And one fast way I did it for the kids after school was I made them on a flour tortilla. They come out really crunchy and I love a good thing crunchy, cheesy pizza. I learned how to make beef stew from my mother-in-law's recipe. Good recipe, really good. One day I decided, let's add some beer in it. It tenderizes the meat more. Instead of broth or water, let's do this with a bottle of beer and some beef broth or water. Oh 
my goodness. This changed the beef stew completely for us. We're not drinkers. So now I have beer stocked in my pantry just for our beef stew. <laughs> so I use a dark lager beer and it just completely changes the beef stew. Just added this incredible flavor that what only that beer can do to the stew. So now we can't make it without it. So that's how we just took a normal beef stew and kicked it up a notch. You can have a do it your own night and create some different type of bars. For Memorial Day, we had a graduation party for my son. So I did a hot dog bar. The combinations that you can make are so good. Put all these things out that they can add to their hot dog. Now I'm pretty basic when it comes to a hot dog. Give me onions, give me relish, mustard, and ketchup. That's about it. And I went online and searched up like how different you can make a hot dog. It blew my mind. It was so fun because I put the menu out on the table so they could see all the different combinations they can make or they could just get creative and make their own. You could do the slaw dog. That's a good one. So it's coleslaw, red onion, and spicy brown mustard. Um, and we usually, during the summer months, always have coleslaw or baked beans as a side dish and putting it on a dog oh yeah so good the reuben dog this one surprised me this was sauerkraut thousand island dressing and shredded cheese never thought i would eat sauerkraut but that combination was so good the favorite combination from that party for me was the hawaiian dog you can also do these combinations with the hot dog bar for your burgers so if you have picky eaters Having things like set out that they could build and try and they end up liking it. Like a big potato bar. You can have your kids try all different vegetables and see if they enjoy it on top of their baked potato. And of course, everything is good with ranch dressing drizzled all over it. I'm always promoting do a charcuterie board or grazing board and add new things to it so that way they'll try it. Every holiday season, I do these big charcuterie boards and the kids will try different dipping sauces, different vegetables, different pickled vegetables. And I'll add new things in to see what they think and they actually try it. I don't understand what it is about that grazing board versus something just put on their plate. I think when they get to see it, pick it out, and then trying it usually my kids end up liking it you could have a pizza bar so you have different toppings that they could try different proteins that they could put on their pizza you could do a taco pizza buy some store-bought meatballs slice them in half put them on the pizza yum Philly cheesesteak pizza make a white sauce or open a jar of alfredo sauce and put it on the crust Thai curry chicken easy margarita pizza I love margarita pizza with the basil and the mozzarella oh my gosh it's so good Go online and look at your pizza takeout places near you and see what combinations that they have. And then you can make it home instead of the good old plain pepperoni pizza or cheese pizza. But get the kids involved, get the family involved and have them pick new things to try. They might be surprised what they like, but it's something about everyone getting in and helping or making their own that makes it exciting. It's just fun to see the reactions of what they created. It's so fun. Take your grilled cheese and bump it up a notch. You can add different types of cheeses you've never tried before. You can add pesto, cranberry sauce, and put some turkey in there, all hot and melty. Pasta night, you could take pasta and make it a million ways. So if you were to take penne pasta, you can either have a red sauce, a white sauce, a meat sauce, a sausage sauce with it or a yummy buttery garlicky sauce to put on top of it. Then you can add a protein to it like chicken and then you can add more veggies to it like I love asparagus with pasta, I love broccoli with pasta and of course a fresh garden tomato with pasta. And then if you have leftover pasta, you can turn those into bakes with uh, cottage cheese and ricotta cheese and mozzarella cheese and make a ziti bake, a spaghetti bake, a calzone bake with the spaghetti inside of it. Casserole night. Instead of making cheeseburgers one time, I made a cheeseburger casserole and I made a cheeseburger soup. So good. And add things into your meals that are in season at that time. So during the summer months, we're having lots of different corn recipes, squash recipes, fruit recipes. I'm, I'm trying different types of salsas. We try different types of gourds and squashes during the fall. So take what's in season and add it into your meal rotation to make things a little different. And take those leftovers and create something new. If you have leftover rice, you can always put it in the freezer. It freezes really well. You can make a rice cereal. It's so good. Add milk or cream to it with some cinnamon 
add some fruit. You could do a rice pudding with your leftover rice. You could do stir fries. You could do stuffed peppers. You can add the rice to burritos. You can make fried rice. So sometimes I will make our chicken noodle soup. I can use rice instead of pasta. And if you have leftover baked potatoes from doing a baked potato bar, you could do twice baked baked potatoes. Those are good and they actually freeze up very well and you could have later for a whole nother meal. If you love to cook up a roast, I like cooking mine with a combination of zesty Italian dressing, buttermilk ranch dressing, and brown gravy. Pack it with a half cup of water. Guys, that roast is so good. I also like doing a Mississippi roast, but you can also, if you have leftovers the next day, make some sliders with it. Add, you know, add it on a hoagie, add it to a bun, and then add your cheeses. It's so good. Any leftover roast could be turned into a slider. So if you have leftovers and you wanna use them up, try some of these toppings. You could take your leftover and crisp it up. You can add it to the frying pan or the air fryer. Add different seasonings to it to make it different and exciting. Or you can add moisture to your leftover. Things like salsa, sour cream, salad dressings, barbecue sauces, mayonnaise, pasta sauce, teriyaki soy sauce, butter, heavy creams and milks. And the toppings can be things like croutons and chips and crackers and cheese, anything topped with cheese, right? If one of your favorite meals that you're noticing you're having too often, how can you take those ingredients and switch it up and make it into another dish? And when I say let's turn it into something else, I'm not saying like completely reinvent the wheel. Small tweaks, like seasonings or adding different sauces or a different way of cooking it like grilling or sauteing it will change our recipe completely. For example, we have a meal that we absolutely love, pesto ranch chicken. Now when I found this recipe, we made it in the slow cooker and we loved it in the slow cooker. We had it that way all the time. But after a while, we weren't feeling it anymore, but we loved the combination of the ranch dressing with the pesto. So one day I took that meal, which I have made into freezer meals all the time. So I took that freezer meal and then instead of putting it in my slow cooker, like we always do, I ended up putting it in a casserole pan and baking it in the oven. You guys, it came out different. It tasted different, the texture was different, and my husband and I looked at each other like, oh my gosh, okay, let's start making it in the oven for now on. So now, instead of being like, we're having pesto ranch chicken for dinner, it's we're having pesto ranch chicken for dinner. Just cooking it up differently has changed the experience for us. Our family loves meatloaf, but we don't have the patience to wait for it. It takes like an hour or more to cook. So when we want dinner on the table faster, we'll fill up a muffin tin with some meatloaf and we'll put the glaze on top and bake it. It bakes for like 25 minutes compared to 60 or more minutes. But when it comes out this way, all the edges are nice and crispy and then nice and moist in the middle. It really is a fun take on the meal. We love making homemade pizza. Well, we usually just bake it in the good old oven. My husband has a smoker. So we decided, let's smoke it. I was really nervous about it, but oh my gosh, it is so good. Instead of slaving over your stove or skillet for your breakfast, you could bake it in the oven on a sheet pan. Have your fried eggs cooked in the oven. You'll heat up your sheet pan for about five minutes in the oven. When you take it out, let butter melt down on it or add some olive oil, then pour in your eggs. They'll spread out all over your sheet pan. Bake at 350 degrees. If you want over easy eggs, depending on your oven, between five to eight minutes, 10 or more if you want it cooked a little longer, and they turn out great. You can also do this with scrambled eggs or make an omelet the same way on your sheet pan. Take your pancake mix, any pancake mix, pour it onto your sheet pan on parchment paper or not, I've done it both ways. Make sure if you don't have parchment paper, it's sprayed really good. Add any toppings and fillers you want, like bananas and strawberries, blueberries, chocolate chips, Bake in a 425 degree oven for 15 minutes. They're gonna come out all golden brown and perfect. So easy, so fast. Just another fun take on a basic recipe. Take one of your favorite recipes and see if you can grill it. Roasting, stir fry, or putting it in your slow cooker or Instapot, or even an air fryer, that's really big right now, and see what the recipe tastes like cooking it in a different way. So to add a little freshness to our repetitive meals, we can add an herb, squeeze on some citrus, add a sauce, 
make a switch and just get a completely different change of atmosphere. Maybe instead of having your dinner at the dinner table, like always, take dinner outside. Sit out on your patio or in the backyard or maybe have it at a nearby park. It's just a nice refreshing change. Even little things like creating a menu board can make dinner time a little more exciting. You can display this week's dinner options on a chalkboard or a whiteboard or even a magnet board and put it on your refrigerator or display it somewhere in your kitchen. You can make it fun and exciting for the family and for the kids and really even motivating for you and involve the family in the menu planning process. Let them choose their favorite meal maybe for that week. And it's a great way to get them in the kitchen and cook with you. We don't have to carry the weight of dinner time all on our own. I think we feel like we need to be superheroes. We have so many helping hands in our home, let's get them involved. And one thing that we've been doing around the dinner table that's made it fun was we printed up some conversation starter cards where there's some really fun questions in there to ask each other. Some of them are lighthearted, some of them are deep, but it is so fun to hear the family's answers. And it always gets a little funny and crazy at our dinner table. It just lightens the atmosphere. I am big on make ahead meals. I don't wanna cook every night. I love the idea of getting in the kitchen one time, banging out some freezer meals, or when I'm already cooking dinner, double or triple the recipe and throw them in the freezer. Doing this makes us eat at home and skip the takeout. Now get your apron on, get in the kitchen, and make that go-to meal of yours even more exciting. Check out these videos here where I share with you some freezer meals that are just as good as takeout. I'll meet you over there. We'll see you later, bye.